Are you and your team tired of looking through a giant table in Excel to try to figure out who the right point of contact is? Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process of building a drop down list tool from scratch that's going to help you and your organization level up the experience of employees trying to look for contact information for somebody in your company. Hopefully, this is something you're interested in. If you're an aspiring project manager or project manager trying to develop great tools for your team, I think this is going to be a good one. So let me jump over to my screen and we're going to get into it. Let's go. So here we go. We have a blank Excel workbook and we are going to be building this thing from scratch. So in this use case, I'm going to be putting together a drop down list for my internal customer service team. And it's going to be a drop down list of our sales reps. And so they're going to be able to look up the sales reps name and it's going to populate which territory they serve and their phone number for if they need to reach out to them instead of the customer service team looking through a table and doing control or command F and, and searching the name, they can do that. This is going to be more of a user-friendly, better interface um, system for them that we're going to create. So the first thing I like to do is I'm going to create my second sheet and everything that I teach here is not prescriptive in the sense of you've got to follow it step by step in the correct order or it's not going to work. These are just tools I'm giving you and you apply them in a practical way in your workflow and the way you do it. This isn't the only way to do this process. So this is just my way and my workflow and maybe it's going to be helpful for you. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sheet. I'm going to, well, I'll rename the first one and I'll call it interface because this is going to be where the tool actually is. I'm going to add a sheet, rename this and call it data where my source data is. And I'm going to come over to my other screen real quick. I have some dummy data over here that I'm just going to copy and paste. So here's my dummy data. Let me just format this to my liking real quick. I like to add borders. It's just the way I am. And then I will fit the width. I don't like that. Um, okay. Uh, another thing I want to do is I want to add filters because keep in mind when you create a drop down list, it's going to populate the order in which the data is organized that you're pulling from. And so, if you want it to be in alphabetical order, that's obviously a very universal way people look for things in alphabetical order. And so you want to make it as easy of an experience for the user as you can. All right. So I have my data here. This is all I need. It's a list of 50 people. It's their first name. It's the territory they serve and it's their contact number if you need to reach out to them. So the way that I'm going to build the interface is going to mirror the layout of these columns. The first column is going to be salesperson. Second is going to be territory and the third is going to be contact. So um, I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Nice and easy. Here's the header column of my interface. This is the column where the customer service reps are going to be able to enter in the salesperson's name and then the territory and the contact information are going to automatically pop up. So we need to start putting some formulas in this territory column here. So it's going to be a V lookup. So the first value is going to be what are you going to be referencing? So the salesperson's name is what I'm going to reference. So this cell E6 comma, the table array is going to be where is the data set you want us to look at for this information to match. So it's going to be here. So I'm going to copy these columns. So A through C and then comma and then column index number is from left to right of your data set. Each column has a number assigned to it, a numerical value. So A, B, and C. So A is one, B is two, and C is three in this case. So if I want the territory to be the one to populate, I see territory is in the B column, which is a two. I'm going to put a two and then a comma, and then I want it to be an exact match. So I'm going to double click on false here and select enter. All right. So if I want to just type in the first person's name here, Alex, I'm just going to test this. As you can see, Alex is the central territory. Let me double check that. So Alex is the central territory. So I'm basically going to do the same thing on the contact number. But what I want to do is I want to lock my, my references here. So in front of the A and the C, since I'm referencing the entire column, I'm going to just put a dollar sign and that's going to lock it for when I drag it over to the next cell. Instead of having to retype this function in the contact number, I'm going to just be able to cl uh, click and drag. And so it's an absolute reference to columns that I just select. So let's click and drag this. So if you notice, it, it actually was a relative reference in the first value here, the lookup value. So it's looking up central. So that's not relevant, right? So I want to move this or just change this back to E enter. All right. So now, as you can see, it's pulling up central again. That's because my column index number is still two, which is territory. I need to change it to three, which is column C for contact number. So let me go back here and say three. So here you go. So five, 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 six, seven, eight, nine, five, 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 six, seven, eight, nine. So we see that it's pulling up the right information. And if I wanted to do Amanda, there's two Amandas here. Maybe we'll just put Amanda one and Amanda two. This is an example, but typically you'll have first and last name. So it's a little bit easier. So let me do Amanda one and she's the North and there's her phone number. Now let's add the drop down menu for our sales reps. So let's go over to data validation In the data tab. We're going to go to data validation right here and we're going to click on data validation. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow a list, which is a drop down list. So our source data, where do we want to pull our source data from? We are going to go over to the data tab and we are going to 
select everybody's name here because we just want to pull from the list of names. The input message for a user is going to say, enter salesperson find from the list below. Error alert, if they get it wrong, it'll say incorrect name. I'm gonna say, please try again. Let's see if this works. So we've got everything we want. It's a list. My source data is coming from that list of names. I'm gonna say, okay. So now if I click off of it and I go to it, it's gonna say enter salesperson's name, find from the list below. Drop down. Okay, so we have a list. And another thing is, I believe if you start typing, yeah, you'll start to get auto population. So Danielle, there's her name and she's the East and there's her contact information. From here, you can format it however you like. It's really up to you. I am not much of a design person, I'll be honest with you. So that's gonna be up to you. And there's cases where you wanna use this sort of tool for any other sort of project, like if we're just kind of a list of items that we need to pull from, and it's not just one row, but I need to use multiple rows to do drop down. then you can do that as well. You just copy what I did into multiple rows, drag the formula down, make sure these are absolute references other than um, this row here, this first value here. But other than that you can you can copy and paste this to how big or small you want it to be it's really up to you and your situation and that is how you build a drop down list tool for your team or company from scratch but you can use this sort of tool for anything I've built tools for projects whether it be a list of parts for a project that you need and it's pulling from the data set where you're picking out your list of tools you need and it's gonna populate things you need with that tool so I've used this same type of tool for other types of scenarios and it's not not just a contact list you can use this for. This is an easy example. So to get your feet wet, to get you trying it out, using some conditional formatting to make the actual interface look better, I would encourage you to experiment with that as well. Um, but I just wanted to give you the foundation of how to do it. And then from there, it's kind of up to you as to how you want to implement it or how you want to customize it to your specific situation. I hope this was helpful. This was a tool that was really helpful for me that I had to build. It was actually created out of, somebody gave me a broad objective of, hey, we need to figure out how to calculate certain things. I just started working through it and I ended up with this tool and it really ended up being a success for uh, the folks that I shared it with and they liked it. So uh, maybe this, this helps you find success in your career, in your situation. That would be really awesome to see you guys succeed. So uh, let me know in the comments below if you like this, if you have any other enhancements you think you could make to it, share those with me. I'd be happy to, to see those and, and, and chat with you about it and to see how I could learn from you guys as well. So if you want to go over to my channel homepage, I have my email in the about section. Well, like I said, comment, subscribe. If you like this type of video or if you want to hear more as far as like practical tools you can use in your project management journey, I want you to do well. I've been blessed with people investing into me. And so I figured getting on YouTube would be a great way to invest in other people that I may never meet. So thank you guys for joining us in today's video. We will see you next time.